You're watching the 97.5 Praise FM live show. I'm Joshua Denoyer, and with me today is Dave Davenport and Randy Caswell. Enjoy. Let me add one more thing onto there. Uh, if you come in verse number five, same place, right where you're at, right where you were at, and an obedience that comes from faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul is going to be going into the rest of this book. And he's going to be talking and admonishing the Roman church to walk by faith, by not by works, not by law, but faith leads us into the grace of God. Faith leads us into Jesus, faith uh, and following after him. So amen, Josh, and everything that you are saying. And, and the fact that Paul is challenging and encouraging uh, the Roman people, the Roman church, to have a strong faith in Jesus Christ and who he is. As a matter of fact, if you look in verse number four, before we get to verse, go through verse number five, I want to notice what it speaks about. Paul says in verse number four, he, he has three names that he, that are three titles, three names that you want to say about Jesus. He said, uh, he said he was Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, mm -hmm. and when you look at that, the name Jesus actually means salvation and it means savior. So in one way, Jesus uh, is our savior. Christ means anointed one. And means with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and that's Messiah. That would be in the Hebrew with the Messiah. So he's the Savior. He's the Messiah. And not only this is he Savior, but he's also Lord. And Lord is rulership and had admonish uh, the the rulership of God in our lives and rulership of this. So so this is not only who Jesus is, but what when we grab him by faith. As, as he's taking hold of us, when we take hold of him and we begin to walk in faith, this obedience, what does it lead us into? Salvation, the anointing, and it also leads us into the lordship, the rulership of Jesus Christ, not just in Jesus's rulership uh, within himself, uh, with the, under God, but the rulership of Jesus Christ in my life and, and, and where he rules and he reigns and he anoints me with his Holy Spirit. And he brings salvation to my eternal life and salvation to me. And how does that come? Does it come by the law? Because see, a lot of these men thought that they had to be circumcised for them to have faith in Jesus Christ. No, it doesn't come by the law. It comes by faith. Faith in Jesus. Faith in who he is. Faith in the work that he did. And faith in the work that he wants to do in us. And I think it's a powerful thing. Um, yeah, that's right. And the uh, the faith comes from Jesus Christ and the uh, the that's what first Timothy 114 talks about and, and uh, let me turn to it here real quick first Timothy 1 let's start in um, I'll start in 12 I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful putting me into service even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a prosecutor and a violent transgressor, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our, and the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. The faith, faith and grace, um, or faith and love, are in Christ Jesus, uh, and. The, you guys use the New International Version. That says, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. And, you know, there's several other scriptures that uh, talk about that. Uh, Second, Second Timothy um, 1.13 also talks about it in Thessalonians that, you know, and I know this from experience. I had, no, I had absolutely no faith. I couldn't even muster any faith and, you know, God poured it out on me through Jesus Christ. You know, I, I tell the story of how he did that. You know, I, I believe I've already told it in this series, but I tell how, you know, I, God told me I'll make you a miracle. And then I go to a meeting and a man says that to me. I mean, God gave me the faith because now I knew God was doing it. It wasn't me. It didn't come from me. And that, that's the way, that's the way he works. And 
going back to Romans one here in, uh, um, he talks, I think it's verse, let me go back to Romans, uh, verse four, he's, or let me go. Yeah. Verse five, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith. This is going back to expand, uh, add a little bit of what Josh said. You know, the uh, mind says the obedience of faith. I think uh, NIV says obedience, which comes from faith. And that's the only way obedience comes is from faith. It doesn't come by me thinking, well, this is going to make God happy. Uh, you know, this is what God wants, you know, uh, and is what you'll find is this is a unique phrase and it's used twice in Romans right here at the beginning in, uh, verse four or five. And then it's used again in Romans 16, almost at the end. So he has sandwiched the whole message of the epistle of Romans between the obedience of faith. And is what I find as I read this and I meditate on it and I study this, I find that's what Romans is all about on how to bring us to faith, how to bring us to the obedience of faith. Obedience only comes from faith. And, you know, and faith isn't this thing of, well, I just trust in it. There's a, you know, or I, I believe it. There's a big difference between belief and faith. A lot of times in the English, we want to uh, use them, you know, the same way. But there's a big difference. You know, the demons have no faith, but yet they believe. They know. They know Jesus is the son of God, and they're afraid of that. They shake. But they don't believe in him. They, they will not place their trust in him, you know, uh, and, you know, and that's what they're talking about. They won't put their trust in him for the redemption. For, well, not that redemption's been made, offered to demons or angels, but they, they, they cannot trust him. They cannot put, you know, they know who he is, but they can't believe in him. And, you know, so there's a big difference and faith enables me to do things the way God wants me to do, you know, it's, I do it God's way, not my way. When I have faith, you know, when you read Hebrews 11, that's what it's all about. You know, Noah built the ark according to the spec specifications that God gave him. He did it by faith. Cain, faith. go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I interrupt. Cain, Cain, Cain made, Cain made a sacrifice that was, um, or Abel made, Cain and Abel made sacrifices and Abel's sacrifice was pleasing to God, more pleasing to God. And why was that? Because Abel gave the first fruits. He gave the first. It doesn't say that Cain didn't, but I'm assuming that that's probably why he didn't, but it does talk, you know, you can find where he gave him the first fruits and, uh, of his, uh, of his herd. And, uh, so I, I, you know, I always looked at that and it didn't say that Cain didn't, but I'm assuming that was probably, it just says that God found it more pleasing, but it does specifically point out that he did give him the first fruits, the best of all his animals. I wanted to bring out the faith part because of the fact that just like you were saying through this epistle, faith is the thread that comes that lines all the way through faith in Jesus Christ, faith in the work that he did, but not only that to walk in the live by faith, you were talking about how important it was uh, because, see, faith leads us into the New Testament grace of covenant, uh, a New Testament covenant of grace. I said that backwards. And so we are to live by faith and we're to live by grace. And and that means we're not going to fulfill the Old Testament. We, we will fulfill the Old Testament law by living by grace. Well, if you look in uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 23, they were uh, the the Judaizers, I guess you could say, or the the Hebrew uh, Christians were saying, you had to uh, fulfill the Old Testament law by what you would eat, or you had to fulfill the Old Testament law to be a good Christian. You couldn't eat pork, you know, you couldn't eat an, anything that's unclean, because that was what the Hebrew law taught. The Hebrew uh, law, the law of the Old Testament, also required that you had to be circumcised. So, so the Hebrew Christians were thinking. Boy, to be a good Christian, you have to be circumcised. To be a good Christian, you have to eat uh, uh, kosher food. And the reality, Paul is saying, no, no, no. The Old Testament law has been fulfilled by faith 
and Jesus Christ. And when he when they were even talking about what they could eat or what they could drink, in verse 23 of chapter 14, Paul says to the to the Roman church, but the man who doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So this faith in the New Testament of grace that comes by the way of Jesus Christ is how we're to move. We we always will say, well, I need to have faith for salvation. That's exactly right. I'm saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But I also have that faith for the food that I eat. I also have that faith for the things that I do. I have to walk in faith and do things for, for God's glory and faith. And I think that's really important. So when Paul's saying here in obedience that comes from faith, um, we can obey and do things just because our mother told us to do it. And we can function in that way. Do you follow what, kind of what I'm trying to say? We can function in a way, but see, God wants our functioning to be according to the faith of what the word of God said. So but, in other words, the, the deep root, the cornerstone has to be the faith that moves me to walk right. in obedience. Well, you know, he, he wants the faith or he wants our actions to be out of faith. He doesn't want our actions to be trying to win his approval. We've already won his approval through Jesus Christ. Our actions are now wrought, you know, in John, it talks about, um, you know, the light is coming to the world, but men didn't love the light because their deeds were evil and they didn't want, they didn't want their deeds exposed. They didn't want them to be, you know, but the one who comes to the light comes so that just, he can show that his deeds are wrought in God. And, um, uh, that, that. It's, you know, God produces the works in me. It's not me trying to please him. It's not me trying to win my salvation. Any works that I have become the product of my salvation. They are the product of Christ in me. Yeah. That's Colossians one twenty seven. You know, he talks about, you know, that he revealed to the Gentiles the mysteries hidden from the past ages. That's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that, and you know, and we don't hope for what we see. That's what he tells us that in Romans. But Christ in me is that hope of glory. That it's Christ in me. It's me allowing Christ to do the work. It's allowing the light to manifest its work in me. It's not me going out and saying, well, I have to do this. I mean, God's not happy if I just grin and bear it and say, well, I got to do this. You know, I see somebody on the, I see somebody on the street corner, man, I better give them some money. I better take them and feed them, you know, because that'll make God happy. No, God put the love into me. God is love. God put the love into me. I now have the nature of God in me. I feel true love. God sent love. The love of God has been poured out within my heart now, and it's being poured out to those around me. And that is what's going on. It's not me saying, oh, oh, here's an opportunity for me to please God. You know, it's the opportunity for Christ in me to manifest himself to the world, to glorify God it has nothing to do with me. And that's why, that's why Jesus tells us, you know, if you go and tell these things, then you've received your reward because that that's to glorify you. You glorify God. God sees it. That's all that matters. Years ago, uh, my brother is a missionary and he was, uh, he lives in on another continent and people were having a famine in the country where he was at and they were giving food out to just every person and the country where he lives in, um, um, the other religion, I guess you could say, the predominant religion in the country, they would give food out to just uh, people that were of their religious faith, but they wouldn't give out food to anyone else that wasn't in their faith. And and they were giving food as Christians. They were giving it food out to everybody. They were giving it to, um, it didn't matter if you were Christian, non-Christian. They were doing that. And one of the things that that he said was uh, when we would hand the food out to the people, they would uh, tell them that we give you this food in the name of Jesus. And they would say that God loves you so much 
that he wants to take care of you, that he sent his son. And they would present the gospel to the people and they would let them know that God loves them and that God cares of, and that these are fellow Christians that have given this food to them so that they might be able to go home and feed their families and not, not, and to be able to survive through this time. But uh, there are other people that just would say, just give them the food and, and that'd be good enough. But, but when they would go, they would actually want to be a testimony of Jesus Christ by sharing them to let them know that this is, this food has been given to you because God cares about you. They brought the faith into it uh, to, to being able to help them. And that's, that's why I think it's important when Paul's saying here uh, to, to this church, we kind of kind of wrap this up for this, uh, the very beginning of this chapter, at uh, the very beginning of this book. He's saying here that, uh, that one, that this is a message of the gospel that has been brought to us and given us to it by God for the purpose of glorifying, and, and, and it comes through Jesus Christ. But I thought it was neat that, that, that he called us to be apostles among the Gentiles that all people might come and to know him as Savior and Lord. It's, it's a powerful thing that not just for the, for the Hebrew Christians to come to know Jesus, but for the Gentile Christians to come to know Jesus. I wanted to add something very, very good here. You, David mentioned 1 Timothy chapter 1. And Paul, I preached this on Sunday, so it's pretty fresh, but Paul um, views himself. He says, previously, I was a blasphemer and a persecutor and an insolent man. And if you look at those three, those three um, characteristics, just, just a, a persecutor and an insolent man just those two characteristics by themselves, you add blasphemer in there. The motivation for Paul's quote unquote ministry to the church at that time, which he thought he was doing a good thing, was motivated by hate. He hated those of the way, which they were called at that point. He hated them. He was he was trying to to uh, bring them to a place, bring the bring them out silence them for the protection of the church he did it out of hate and if we want to talk about real change you you talked about your brother as a missionary giving out food and saying i give you this in the name of jesus there was a change there that happens in a person's heart toward other people and if you want to see real change look at paul's life he saw himself prior to christ christ being being a christian as a blasphemer a persecutor and an insolent man someone who was driven by hate and driven by um, things that were ad ad adverse to being a Christian. Jesus comes in. We've talked about this on a major, in, a, in a major way, knocks him off his horse, changes his mind, changes his way. And now he views the same people as brothers, as people that he's going to, to minister to and in, consequently even die for the faith they're in later in his life and so there if you want to talk about change paul's life was a real change and if you if you experience jesus in a real way there's going to be a real change and i i sometimes question um people who have a salvation experience now i cannot judge one man's salvation experience over another man's salvation experience but we are called to I think be fruit inspectors to kind of um, to kind of not judge people, but kind of just uh, view people's um, way of thinking, way of action. And if there's no real change, you know, if they walk in the church, they get saved, they walk out and and nothing really changes. Uh, and, I, and I know there's a could be struggles going on there, but if nothing really changes and there's no real sign of remorse or repentance, then. I have to question that encounter with God because in my own ministry, I've seen people that go before and they, and they accept Jesus Christ and it's an emotional experience and they, they're they moved by the Spirit. They walk out of the of the church. We have two doors and two doors. We have four doors out, out of our building. And within two, three days, they're back doing what they were doing before. And so you question and I question 
their their since not 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 only their sincerity but their encounter with god whether it was a real encounter with god paul here had a real encounter with god so much so that everything that he learned from schooling university and all these things that was upended in one moment it was all upended and there was a real change so i kind of question sometimes the change in some people but if you want to see a real change look at paul's life look at look at the way paul uh changed from being an insolent man a persecutor and a and a blasphemer to being a lover of of the lord who eventually died for his faith that's a real change it's a real change in a person's life and i think that's that's important to to see that and to understand that because yeah we can judge we can we can we can inspect people's faith we don't really we can't really judge someone else's walk from our walk i mean i'm not i'm not at all suggesting that but i think we can kind of view the 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 depth of the change by actions that follow the encounter with god i think i think we can we can kind of we can kind of um ev ev evaluate that change um but uh, and and i understand and and some people might say well some people struggle with things and and there's you know it takes a little bit longer to get over things well that's and i agree with you in that i think that's in, that's important to never forget that but what happens to a person when they struggle and they fall how do they how do they uh react to that what is their first thing that they do when they react to that do they do they go before god and, and say god forgive me or do they show remorse or do they just keep going and keep moving and i think a lot of times that's that's how we can kind of evaluate the encounter with god for some people well what you're talking about the change paul paul discusses that right there in first timothy one it is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason, I found mercy, so that in me is the foremost, and I'm going to add, the foremost of sinners, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. He changed him. It was only through Jesus Christ. Paul didn't do anything. To, he couldn't do anything to change himself. Like you said, he was, he was ran by hatred. And he was operating on hatred out of a zeal for God, as he says earlier here, that was in ignorance. Mm -hmm. but, and, and I think, too, what we're, what we're talking about here, too, is that he viewed himself. It, it's how he viewed himself. He didn't view himself as a proud man who, oh my goodness, God saved me, so I'm going to be proud now. No, God saved him. Yes, he boasted in the salvation, but he also viewed himself as what he was prior to that. The King James says that he, chief of sinners, of sinners, I was, a, I was chief. He was the, he was the leader of the pack. He was the one, he was the one leading the That's way right. for the sinners. And see, I think part of that change that, we kind of have issues that I kind of evaluate people's changes, how they, they view themselves after that. Never forget where you come from. And I think that's, right. that's important to understand. Never forget where you come from, where you were, then that helps you to minister to other people. Right. You know, because and, Paul, and, and I can't, I, I can't stress, you know, Titus two enough, Titus two, starting in verse 11, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. That's what the grace of God does. It's mm -hmm. not the law. We, you know, Jesus Christ, grace came through Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses. So when he put, when Jesus Christ came, he fulfilled the law. He poured his grace out upon us, you know, and that's what Ezekiel's talking about. He put, he, he gave us a new heart. And he put his spirit in us so that we may walk in obedience to his statutes and, and obey his ordinances. And that's the only way we do it. We do it with a glad heart. We do it willingly, wantingly in, in a very, it's not this thing of, of, I have to do it. I need to do it or anything else. It becomes our nature. We have 
you know, I was born in the nature of Adam. In the rebirth, I now have the nature of God through Jesus Christ in me. And, you know, and, I think, I, I, I think, you know, when you go back to the Gospels and you look at, you look at Jesus uh, being led into the, de into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted of the, of the devil. Uh, the reason that I I believe through prayer and through reading of the scripture that that happened was that so that Jesus can be personal for us. Jesus can identify with us. He can minister to us on a real level. And so when we uh, never forget where we come from, we then are given the opportunity to show the love of Christ in a way that we can identify with someone and say, yes, I was here. I was doing this or I was experiencing this or I was taking this drug or I was drinking this this booze. But Jesus got me through it. Jesus, it wasn't easy. It wasn't pie in the sky by and by. But every step of the way, Jesus was walking along with me. And I think that's the importance of never forgetting who you are and, and why Jesus did what he did in the desert. He overcame the sin so that when we were minute when we are in the depths of that that temptation and sin jesus can come alongside us and be that personal savior not just someone up above us saying i'm going to work it out so you you have a good life but somebody who walks alongside us step by step through the storm that we can we can be better for having gone through things you look at uh jesus and uh it's in Matthew chapter 13 is what I'm at right now. But uh, the parable of the sower, if you look at that, that uh, when Jesus told him that parable of the sower, the farmer sowed the seed. Inside that seed is the, the, the word of God. And it's the power of God. And it's one that liberates us. It's one that sets us free. It's one that makes us holy, makes us righteous. Then Jesus uses the, the illustration of the what the heart is like. And the first one was a uh, the hard ground and the seed could not penetrate it and that that's a, a person that hears the gospel and absolutely just doesn't care their hearts hardened at that time and they cannot the seed can't go, go into the ground the other one was it came upon the rocky place and it sprang up and in the soil it produced fruit for just a moment but but it did not have a, a heart that would receive it and keep it and i'm not going to go into the whole teachings of that but the other one it fell among the thorns and it grew for a while but then the cares of the world become more important. Jesus was basically saying that uh, there are four types of uh, hearts in the parable, four types of, of re reactions or responses to the seed. The seed still has the power for the hard path. The seed still has the power for the, the rock. The seed hill still has the power for the ones that are among the thorns. But then it says when it finds the good ground, that seed produces 60, 100, and 100 fold. And, and when we come to our personal, when I look at my life and I see this, yeah, I believe God has a divine plan, but I also believe that uh, I have a will that I, I can submit to the Lord. And I have a will that says uh, um, things in my life can can really uh, can go bad. I mean, I could actually uh, become a person that the cares of the world can become more important to me than, than God himself. The, the things of, I want to make my heart, I want to make sure that, that, that my life is a life that uh, the that the Lord can do his work and do a mighty thing. And that's what you're asking about people that hear the gospel. Some of them are like the rocky ground. They hear it. They rejoice. And, and man, this is a wonderful time. They have a moment with Jesus. But then they don't continue to walk in the word. They don't continue to listen to the Holy Spirit. The one of the very last things that Jesus is in Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. He, those ears, let him hear. And he constantly was telling people, listening to the Holy Spirit, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. I think when we come at the end, the most important part of us to do is to have the faith to listen and to submit to the will of the Holy Spirit and to walk in his ways. There is a freedom and a liberty that God has. That work of the, that work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus has a great work in life, and he has a great work he wants to do in your life, Josh. In Dave's life, and the thing is, if we allow him to do that work, he will produce the fruit of righteousness. It's really, in one way, it's a, a life of listening and walking with the Holy Spirit. And it's a life of submitting your will to his will. 
That's where it's hard. The heart is in submission to say, Lord, I want, I want to do your will instead of my will. I want to walk in your ways instead of my ways. And you know who births that inside of us? Not our flesh, but the Holy Spirit. I mean, think about this. When's the first time you said, I want to do God's will? Was that because it was within inside of you to do it? I think it was the Holy Spirit that was birthing that desire inside. That's where that Ezekiel 36, where the Holy Spirit not only washes us, I mean, the, the Lord washes us, but he puts the Spirit inside of us and moves us to obey his commandments. Well, that's... Uh... Uh, he addresses that in Second Corinthians 5. Um, I'll start in verse 17. He says, Therefore, if, any, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's why he brought us into... That's why he made us children, so that we could go out and bring more people. That's our, that's God's will. That's our purpose. You know, when I find people that don't have a pur- tell me they don't have a purpose in life. When, when you're born again, you, ha- you have a purpose, and that's to bring more people into the kingdom. But anyway, I'll go back to the, uh, to the scriptures. And now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God in that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses trespasses against them. And he has committed us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though we were making an appeal, as though he were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. And that's what, that's what Josh was talking about here. Go to Ephesians 5, um, yeah, Ephesians 5, uh, verse 12, or no, verse 13. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. My mental illness, my alcoholism, my being sexually abused as a child. Those are dark, dark things. But, you know, God came into my heart, shined the light on those. Those were the things that made me angry. Well, that you know i was an angry bitter man and i took that out on people around me but you know the light of god shined on my heart and illuminated those things and he taught me to deal with them we go into that some other time but it says but all things when they become visible and are exposed by the light for everything that has become visible is light so when i share those things they become light people that have experienced those same same things and have all that anger and that bitterness and that hatred, they see that, hey, Jesus Christ can come and take that away. I mean, it, it I, I won't say it removed all the hurt, but, you know, he brings, he, cha- he changed my sorrow. Jeremiah tells us that he will change our sorrow to joy. And he made that sorrow joy because when I share this with people and I work with people and I see them overcome these things and I see that root of bitterness leave them, then all of a sudden I have joy. I have great joy. You know, I I was with a couple of men a couple of weeks ago and one of them didn't know the Lord. And me and the other man started sharing. And, you know, the other man that started sharing when he walked in, he told me he didn't feel good. He had a rough week, but you know, after he shared, after he walked out of there, he had a bounce in his step and he had a big old smile on his face. Why? Because he was fulfilling the will of God that he's talking about there in second Corinthians. He was being an ambassador for Christ. He was sharing the love and the hope that Jesus Christ had given him. And he walked out of there. I mean, it was amazing because he walked in. I could tell he didn't feel good. I could tell he was down. He walked out of there with a smile on his face and a bounce in his step. And other people noticed, wow, he walked out awful happy. And people were asking. I didn't go into all the details, but I said, hey, he got to share his faith. And he got and he got to talk to a man 
who's not a believer. And it was amazing. It, it was powerful stuff. And I realized, you know, when we share our faith and when we share the things of God, it does as much for us as it does. It maybe does more for us than it does for the other people sometimes, you know, and, uh, but that he fulfilled the will of God. That's, you know, that's what he says. That's the will of God is for us to be ambassadors. And he walked out of there. I don't know that that's the way he looked at it, but boy, he walked out of there feeling really good. And that's where uh, I think we're coming to a time we got to close, but let's go and let's, let's connect this right here. Paul was fulfilling the will of God. And, and look what is this is in verse number five. Uh, part of it says here, for we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. Paul was saying here, it is my great joy and my great mission that God's called me to share this gospel message to you Gentiles, not just uh, to the Gentiles, uh, because it was God's will. And and I tell you what, I love that because I'm not Jewish. <laughs> and I, I'm now able to know that God's will is for me to come into his kingdom and to know him as and that that Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, is also my Messiah. And that I can come into this, uh, uh, my family relationships was not given the Old Testament law. But I tell you what, because of Jesus Christ, has been, he's, my family has been given the new covenant of grace. And now as a Gentile, later on, Paul said, the people that did not seek God will know God. <laughs> and the people that knew God did not do not know them. My family is a, we're a Gentile family. Um, and we know God today because of Jesus Christ. And Paul, a Gentile, a Jewish Hebrew, is writing to the uh, to the church, and he's saying it's the will of God for the Gentiles to be saved. Just like your friend Dave, that was had great joy of sharing the testimony of Jesus Christ to another man. Uh, I tell you what, when we witness to people, it is a great joy. Do you enjoy witnessing? I love it. I love sharing the gospel of Jesus. I love sharing my life with people what Christ has done with me. Let me tell you, I. I don't share, I, I don't share with other people because I have to, to ensure my salvation or anything else. I do it because he made such a drastic change in my life. He brought me as Psalms 40 says, he brought me out of that miry pit. He changed my life. He gave me life. He gave me a wonderful life. And I want other people to know that. I mean, not that they, he gave me life. Well, I want them to know that he gave me life, but I want them to experience the same thing that I've experienced because it's incredible. I mean, when you have that change, I mean, I can honestly tell you my worst day now is, is better than the best day I ever had before, before Christ took hold of me. And I mean, I, I can't explain it to you. But all I know is I don't have the low lows anymore, you know, and I don't have the high highs anymore, but you know, I, I have the fulfillment of Jesus Christ in me. You know, he told us that he was the bread that came to heaven. He declared himself to be our fulfillment. And I know that I've lived that and I've experienced that. And I just want to share it with other people so that they can experience the same fulfillment through Jesus Christ that I have. Amen. Josh, I want to ask you a question. I want you to close this out here. I want to kick, kicking it long and giving it to you. Uh, verse number six, it says here, and also among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. You belong to Jesus, don't you, Josh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, and how I know that is my want to's changed. When I got saved, the things I was doing, I didn't want to do anymore. And the things I didn't want to do, I wanted to do them. And I did it out of a love for Jesus. I didn't do it out of a, I didn't do it out of an obligation that if I don't do this, I'm going to go to hell, or if I don't do that, I'm going to, I'm going to go to hell. I need to do this in order to be made right with God, like we talked about early, er, earlier in the program. Uh, I did it because I wanted to. I did it because I desired to please my Savior, and that's how you can tell the difference in someone who is known of God and, and beloved of God, someone who wants to do things for Jesus Christ out of love for him, not out of obligation or fear. And that's a, that's a, a, a different dynamic when you're, when you're operating out of fear 
of damnation or fear of, of going to hell. And that's a works-based system. And so we don't want to live by a works-based system. Paul tells us in Romans we're to live by faith, not by works. And he says that in Ephesians. We're, not, we're to live by faith, not by works. And so, you know, a works-based system would say, you know what, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and I've got to do this to, to absolve my sin and be right before God. But a faith-based system says, yes, I am, I am a sinner, but Jesus Christ saved me, and he's going, to, he's going to help me through. And that's the important thing to remember. So if you are, are a believer and you uh, like what you've heard today, I pray that you pray for us. You pray that we, we, we pray that you uh, lift us before God. And if you want to hear more of these things, I want to go ahead and give you the addresses where you can go to. You can go to mypraisefm.org or firstassemblyofgodchurch.org to listen to all the episodes download them for free. They're also on my podcast at anchor.fm. Go to anchor.fm, type up Stepping Stones of Faith in the search bar. You'll find the podcast there as well. Go to our YouTube channel at, at uh, 97.5 Praise FM YouTube channel. Go there. We, we, we have episodes there as well, as well as on my YouTube channel, Stepping Stones of Faith. So check those things out. Listen to those things. Download where you can download. Use them to learn Use them to grow in God. That's our prayer for you today. Pray for us, and we will pray for you. So until next time, I'm Joshua Denoyer for Dave Davenport and Randy Caswell. God bless. <laughs>